You're, You're with, with the, the Breaker Leggers, and we're in London's West End at the Theatre Royal Haymarket to see the RSC production Queen Anne. So stay tuned to find out how many legs, whether it's break a leg or, or leg, leg it. it. Before you go any further, to make sure you've always got your finger on the theatrical pulse of theatre news, reviews and interviews, hit the subscribe button now. Queen Anne. Um, what do we know about this piece? She was a queen. She was called Anne. And is, that, is that as far as our knowledge goes? Um, <laughs> this, um, I've got to admit my historical British monarchy history isn't really up to par. Everything I know, I know from pieces like this. This production itself started off at the Swan Theatre at the RSC. In 2015. Yes. And it struggled to find a place in London, but here it is now at the Haymarket. Yeah, limited run. It's kind of plugging a gap here. Now, we've seen other RSC productions at the Haymarket. It seems to be its natural home, it seems to gravitate into town. This is the story of one of um, England's lesser known sovereigns and her friendship with Sarah Churchill and the birth of the free press. It sounds. Um Interesting. Uh, if anything, it will be a history lesson because I too um, am not so hot on kings and queens and past histories. Absolutely. And as it's an RSC production, you're in for some fabulous wigs. We'll let you know what we think at the interval. We've come to the interval of Queen Anne, which means it is time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 Second Interval, interval Breakdown. Go! What do you think so far? Yeah, for me, um, it seems well observed. Helen Edmondson um, has looked into the history. Uh, some nice touches, although the direction for me is lacking a little bit. Feels a bit lather, rinse, repeat. How about you? Yeah, there's something um, I imagine when it was originally done at the Swan Theatre with the thrust stage, it would have been very dynamic staging. Um, something seems to have been lost in its transition to a proscenium arch. Um, interesting content. I'm yeah. excited to know what is going to happen next. I'm learning. We're learning. We've come to the end of Queen Anne at the Haymarket. So, let's start with you. What did you think of that? Um, I found it interesting. We have lamented before um, in previous videos and with each other about the lack of a lesbian themed show. Oh, and yes. I didn't even know that this had female gay connotations. I didn't even know that bit of history existed. And it does. And it's presented here um, really nicely actually there's some beautiful touches of just very fluid simple scenery but that tell an interesting story and from an historical context um, I feel enlightened how about you yes yeah, it's definitely one of those productions where I want to now go and hit the history books and find out the ins and outs and the context of what we just saw uh, in terms of the set, yeah, the set was very nice. Um, it was really nice to see the interplay and the power of the courtiers about who was it who had the ear of the queen and almost the manipulation influence. and the, yeah, the influence and how one side was very blatantly open with their causes and how it didn't really play to the queen's strengths and a more subtler approach paid off and our planting seeds met the same ends. It was, it was very interesting in terms of power play. I suppose it, it does reflect the, you know, the current situation now where one person is a ruler but is relying on the information of a team of people, of specialists in certain areas to give them the relevant information and if that information can be um, misinterpreted then decisions can be made which are ultimately wrong and ultimately harmful. So it's actually, although one person bears the responsibility of power, it's actually this, this type of piece where it's historical politics goes to show that actually it's everyone's responsibility, right down to the public making a vote, right to the people that actually have the closest relationship with the rulers. Yeah, and in terms of the writing, there's two very strong lead characters in terms of is the Queen Anne and also Lady Marlborough. Um, how the relationship at the start 
comes completely 180 come the end and um, so that's some really nice writing to see the inner strength of the Queen develop as she goes through her narrative of, of what happened in history. Were there any particular parts that stood out to you? Uh, I particularly like Romola Garay as um, Sarah Churchill, the Duchess of Marlborough. Uh, I thought that she played a, a very Machiavellian, two-faced power bitch, but I liked her interpretation. You were a little bit on the fence about it. Thought it was a bit obvious? Yeah, I, she was very much bitch to me. That was what the, the part was. I would like to have seen it being played in a bit more subtle ways. A bit more truthfully rather than the stereotypical archetype. Yeah, I think it was a bit more modern day stereotypical of bitch, which I, I think I personally would like. She was a like. bit Devil Wears Prada at times, wasn't she? Yeah, I almost would like a more of a passive, aggressive approach. I, I don't think it needs to be sold. It's very much in the text as to how she feels. I don't think it, think it needs to be over-yoked in the delivery. Another thing personally. I really like about the RSC productions is the live music. Yes, having yeah. a, a live musician. It makes all the difference. It lifts a piece. It really does. And in fact, that's what's quite nice in the writing of this is that um, they incorporate um, Song. pieces, songs from the time, almost like little performances that maybe would have been performed at the time. On yeah. um, fictional. They're not. They're not historically accurate. Non-current themes. But, but they. Yeah. yeah. But they are. Um, you know, you could imagine people being entertained by that. There's a lot of wit, a lot of humour. And people that seem to love this um, kind of, what would you class this period as? Late Victorian? Georgian? I'm really not very good with my history. 1700s. But, yeah, but you know that they love a dirty joke, don't they? Oh yeah, it's very crass. Yeah, yeah they love it that is. though. They love a bit of, you know, you know, they love a bit of the C word and like... A bit of rumpy pumpy. Little, yeah, they, they blooming love that stuff. And that was great, played to great humour by an ensemble of... of players of singers you know with, with yeah. some great talent in the ensemble uh, I'd imagine it's really nice and fun in the ensemble for this piece actually yeah I don't know there's definitely stuff for them to do as an ensemble with those um, kind of musical cheeky performances moments. cheeky moments yeah uh, any other parts um, I the um, Queen was played by Emma Cuniff uh, for me she's had a lot of praise for this role but for me it was just okay yeah it was okay it was okay. I almost wanted to see more of a transformation at the end. There's very much, she plays very well very early on, the melancholy that she's going through, having the loss of so many yeah, children. Yeah, mis she's miscarried, she's had deaths in the family. And also she's very ill, um, so you can constantly see that she's in pain. Um, so she plays that well, but I almost want a bit more of an inner strength at the end. That, that would be the only thing. A bit thing. more resolve. A bit more resolve. Uh, yeah. That's the only one thing I was looking for. I do definitely like Helen Edmondson's take on this historical story and the way that it's been presented in a, a piece which does feel relevant in a lot of ways to the, the, the uncertainty and times that we live in and, the, and the, the fear of influence. I'm thinking about Trump and I'm thinking about like the press and the media and what they're saying to him and about him and how he as a leader is perceiving people's opinions on him and things. I did draw parallels with the now. I think this is very, it's a very timely, timely show. Yeah, it is. It's just about the power play of court and advisors and someone being in control and who really pulls the strings yeah. and who you have around you really influences the decisions you make. And something we touched on on the interval was um, the direction maybe working better in the um, in the thrust rather than the cross arch straight on. Um, but Natalie Abrahami has done her best with it, I think, having to transpose it onto a cross. Yes, I would have loved to have seen it in the thrust. I, I, it just has a different feel, and I could see that this. Piece I'd have would loved the actors well with the, the audience at times as well. Like I'd have almost loved the the pieces where you're kind of in the pub and you're having all the dirty limericks and stuff. I would have liked that played out a little bit more to an audience. I think that would have been really fun. Yeah, you'd been really close to it, I imagine, yeah. in the Swan Theatre. That's what we thought. Yeah, and so... I bet you're wondering how many legs. Well, for Queen Anne at the Theatre Royal Haymarket. Playing a limited run until the end of September. We are going to give... Three! Three legs for this piece. Yeah, if you've even a passing interest in that period of history, 
I would say come and see it. You might learn something new or you might like to see that information played out in a, in a slightly different way. I imagine that it's something that's covered in the history books often, but probably not staged a huge amount, and certainly not with LGBT themes. Yeah, that's definitely something I want to check out, and um, I must have been away at school during that particular history lesson because um, all this is quite new to me. Well, I went to school so during Section 28, so we probably didn't even get the chance. <laughs> but um, that's what we think. We'd love to know what you think. Leave your comments below. Subscribe. Like. Follow us on Twitter. We're the Breaker Leggers. We'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.